Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to everyone who attended this session. I would like to first welcome uh, Associate Professor Daisuke Sugama from the University of Tokyo. Welcome, Sensei. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It should be it's early morning now, right? Mm, I will introduce you. I'll actually make a very brief CV of you if you don't mind. I will show <laughs> to the participants. So um, thank you for uh, your uh, kind uh, availability to share the lecture for everyone today. And um, so before we are starting the session, uh, I would like to share a brief um, CV of our speaker of today. Um, yeah, I hope everyone can see my slide. So uh, I didn't confirm the CV to Sugama since <laughs> I hope everything is okay. <laughs> so um, today uh, we are going to have the lecture and the title is the use of reporter genes and recombinant proteins, the technical steps and consideration. And our speaker is the associate professor uh, Tadisuke Sugama from the University of Tokyo, Japan. And this lecture is part of a course in the plant and uh, plant breeding and biotechnology study program in ITP University, uh, where I am the coordinator. So for anyone who doesn't know me yet, my name is Inda Wahning Ardi, and I a uh, lecturer in the ITP University. So um, our speaker today is um, graduated fully from the University of Tokyo, Japan from his PhD until his PhD program and he finishes his PhD in 2013. So soon after his graduation from the University of Tokyo, he continued his um, uh, research in University of Tokyo in as a GSPS research fellow from 2009. 13 until 2015 in the Graduate School of Agriculture and Life Sciences. And in between of that period, he also became a visiting scholar in biology in the Pennsylvania State of University in the US. And he returned to Japan to join the Hokkaido University as an assistant professor in 2015 until 2018. So after that, until now, um, Sugama Sensei, that's how I call him, is an associate professor in the University of Tokyo, Japan, in Asian Natural Environmental Science Center. So you can see his uh, list of publication. You can just scan the um, QR code showing in this slide or uh, go to his ORCID um, profile uh, showing uh, in this slide as well. So that would be the brief introduction of um, Sugama Sensei. And without further ado, uh, we would like to invite Sugama Sensei to uh, deliver his lecture. Please, Sugama Sensei. Okay. Thank you, Shinto san. For giving me this important opportunity. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. To, as so that uh, early morning. So in Japan, it's 10 o'clock already. So uh, and uh, your time, so in your time, it's eight, right? So <laughs> uh, thank you very much. So, so, so I will start sharing my screen. So I can start, right? <laughs> I'm um, going to uh, no, probably I cannot share my screen now. Oh, really? Uh, let me check my security. I'm ah, mm. so sorry. Now, please try again. Yeah. Is this visible? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Okay. So, so, so I will start my talk. The title is Use of Reporter Genes and Recombinant Proteins, the Technical Steps and Consideration. And uh, I'm Daisuke Tsugama, and thank you again, Shinto-san, for introducing me. 
、うん、あの、It's Perfect Way は、えっと、Too Much <笑>と Introduction の場に。で、えっと、で、あのー、I ダボをチェックした meanings of reporters in the recombinant protein for this lecture. And I found that recombinant DNA protein has broader meaning than I thought. I'm sorry for that, actually. <laughs> And、uh, so, reporter DNA protein is included in the recombinant DNA protein, or it's a part of it. So, the title may be confusing, and I'm sorry for that. Yeah. えっと、はい。<笑>ということで、あの、で、えっと、I'll move on to the contents of this presentation. So, the, えっと、main topics are three. So, the first one is introduction, and the second one is reporter gene protein, and the third one is tag gene protein. So, うん。で、そう、so, so, I'll begin with the first part, introduction. えっと、the recombinant reporter and tag gene proteins are like this. So, as I said in the beginning, so the recombinant DNA protein it has the broadest meaning in these categories of genes and proteins. And、uh, the concept is like this. So, the recombinant DNA protein is DNA or protein generated by methods of genetic re. Recombination such as cloning that create sequences that do not exist in nature. The, えっと、as part of it, reporter gene protein is existing and、uh, tag gene protein also exists and they partially overlap with each other. The, so in this talk, I'm focusing on reporter and tag gene protein. Okay, so I'd like to clarify this one first. And、uh, I know, I've, been, ah, the, to, I've been working to, for like、uh, more, to longer than 10 years for Arabidopsis saliana, the model plant. And、uh, I was using to, reporter gene and tag gene protein a lot for that study. But、uh, I'm not introducing to, my own study actually to, very much to, in this talk. うん、そう、えっと、if by any chance,、uh, got interested, えっと、have got interested in my study, please check my papers later.、うん、えっと、I'm only partially, えっと、partially, えっと、introducing my study. And, えっと、I'm just, えっと、introducing some general, えっと、points in this book. Okay. So, えっと、these are the points to consider when we Use the target protein or reporter protein. The, ano, I think the purpose of the experiment with the recombinant DNA protein is pretty much important always. And,、uh, and for that purpose, pitch expression system, so in vitro bacteria, yeast, insect cells, plants, etc., is used. So it's important. The, for these purposes and the expression system, Pitch vector and the features are important. Ah, the important thing with to consider pitch vector and features are used. So, this is an example of a binary vector, or the vector for bacteria and the plants. So, this vector is basically for plant transformation, and for that, agrobacterium is often used. And、uh, that's why、uh, the vector is designed for both bacteria and plants. And、uh, this is kind of typical、uh, vector for plant transformation. And、uh, the point is that、uh, looking at this map,、uh, we think about the features of the vector. OK?、Uh, for this one,、uh, so、promoter is important. Ah, I'm sorry. So, so these are the cassettes for expressing the gene of interest. And in this case, so the gene is important, of course. And the promoter choice is also important.、And、so, this determines how the gene is expressed in the plants. And in some cases, we want to use reporter gene like this. 
And how to fuse them or how to use it is important also. The, in some cases, another gene of interest is put like this in the vector. And for that gene also, promoters and in some cases, reporter is important. The, for, plant, for the binary vector system, so we will have an antibiotic resistance gene for plants and so antibiotic resistance gene for bacteria. These can be together, but these can be separate. Yeah. So these are typical so binary vector system. <laughs> I'm not introducing all the vector system, but the point is that we look at the features and we try to understand which features are which. And so, and so has pitch, have pitch, pitch function. So, so LB and RB should be the, and so, and so, and so, the TDN borders. So, so if I look at this map, I would think that uh, this region, the and so, top from top to the right, and so, this region will be introduced into plants, and, uh, and so, this region left bottom region will not be introduced into plants. So this is just for bacteria, and uh, this is not for plants. Okay, it, uh, here is another example. This is a uh, P32 vector. Okay, so this is an uh, example of a vector for protein expression in bacteria. Okay, so this is a uh, kind of most difficult example, I think, and that's why I showed this one. And, uh, and uh, I was using this picture it, when I was a student, and, uh, and I got to several problems in understanding this feature, these features, and uh, I got a practical problem in expressing the protein of my interest. So and these are the questions uh, so relevant to those problems. Yeah. And, uh, looking at this map, this map, we can see that the lack I gene is present at, like this here. So what is this gene for? <laughs> the, 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 if the, the, another problem I had was uh, that the, the, I used the XBA1 site the, the, for cloning that the, the gene of my interest. And uh, I, know, I cloned it successfully, but I, know, I failed to express that protein. So, so in that case, what was the problem? So this is the second question is that one. And the third question is what should be done for the three prime end of the gene to be cloned if it is fused with the histag codons? The important feature of this vector is that this vector can fuse the histag to the T terminal end of the protein of interest. Or uh, histag codons are fused to the three prime end of the gene of interest. So, so if we want to fuse those, uh, those histag to the gene of interest, what should be, uh, what should be true? This is the third question. And uh, can any of you answer these questions right now? I'm interested. Yeah, so I'd like to give some so give you some time to think about it. So if if there is no person so who can answer now, like three minutes. Is there any? If you can answer, then it will please raise your hand. Don't be shy, please. Shinto san wa makaru. So um. Yeah, I, I think some of the participants are, are not familiar yet with okay. the expression factor. Ah, okay. Ah, oh. okay. okay. Uh, then, then I will give you answers and I will explain the expression factors using this map. Uh, thank you. Ah, uh, 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 that information will be very much helpful. So uh, please say, Shinto <laughs> san, please help me. Uh, if the explanation is too difficult, uh, please help me and I will go try to elaborate. Okay. So, uh, it will please think it will like, ah, uh, it's too, too difficult already. So, uh, 
。あ、バトル、うん、あのジャスティン、スリーミニス、高校スリーミニス。<笑>うん、<笑>えっと。You can also ask some questions regarding the answer. Not direct questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh. About other features or something like that. Uh, Bapak Ibu silahkan kalau uh, ini sebetulnya ada pertanyaan yang disampaikan di slide, tapi kalau memang uh, ada yang belum dipahami mengenai fitur dasar dari gene expression factor, silahkan kalau mau ditanya tadi ada promoter, ada gene of interest, ada terminator, uh, apa saja yang bingung dari slide ini silahkan dikonfirmasi ke Skama Sensei. Mm. Actually, other features are important to answer these questions. Yeah. So I think there are two sides to respond. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, that's what I thought. Uh, so, yeah, it's all, uh, so it, uh, oh, I okay. think there's one. Students raising hand. Um, Safira, please unmute yourself. Okay. Mm. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, Mrs. RD and uh, Tsukama Sensei. My name is Safira Rahma from uh, the. Actually, I'm not from the uh, from the study program of this uh, session right now. I'm from agriculture. I'm from agronomy and horticulture. So, all this. Um, uh our lesson today is a bit or a bit uh mm -hmm. foreign to me i'm sorry uh oh. excuse me can uh would you uh would you um took me back to the previous slide previous mm. okay oh well actually um, actually i took some notes from the uh from from the i mean about the about the definition of uh a pro, a recombinant protein. So among them is a reporter gene. Uh, is it, maybe I'm not. Among them is a report. Among the pro, among the recombinant protein is the reporter gene. Right now, uh, from in the slide is this uh, green, this with the green arrow. Um, uh, Tsukama Sensei, does mm -hmm. that mean uh, the reporter gene is always uh, work? Uh, is always uh, work around. Around this, uh, around this area, I mean the, I mean between the gene of interest and the terminator, and if yes, uh, what are actually what are its its function? Is it to strengthen the expression or anything about anything else? Uh, thank you. Ah, to me, eh, to, first, eh, to the reporter gene, to is not always between the gene of interest and terminator. The reporter gene, eh, can be used alone. Without the gene of interest, I mean the reporter gene itself can be the gene of interest. For example, GFP can be used alone with promoter of interest. Without this kind of thing. Ah. Um. Ah. 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 I mean, mm. well, uh, kono, uh, ano, kono atari no, kono atari de function, uh, shitanara, <laughs> kono atari de function na suru na, uh, suru to wa, uh, ano, sono function wa, uh, nani mondo desu ka? Fungsi nya, what, what are, what are the function of this reporter gene? Uh, ah, eto, um, ano, various. <laughs> eto, demo. Reporter gene is reporter gene, so it, it reports anything. Uh, for example, in the case of GFP, it can be the reporter of uh, to subcellular localization of some protein of interest. And uh, so we will, uh, I will introduce GAF gene later, and GAF gene can be the reporter of uh, tissue specificity or stage specificity of gene expression, or promoter activity. 
Mm. If we fuse pro, to some gene promoter to gas gene and do gas staining, then we can see the specificity of the promoter activity mm. by the pattern of the staining. Eto, and uh, another example of reporter gene is Luciferase. Recif Eto, if we fuse the promoter of interest to Luciferase and uh, express that of Chimeric gene to promote the receptase with other effector, effector constructs. And then if the receptase activity is enhanced by the effector, that means that the effector protein and that promoter upstream of the receptase are interacting with each other. So the reporters are like that. They report anything regarding the biological processes. Oh. So mm. it's similar to, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for uh, interrupting. Okay. So it's similar to uh, like transcription factor or something? Uh, yeah, some reporter genes are used for transcription factors and uh, but I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> wondering and uh, transcription, uh, reporter gene is not always transcription factor. Uh, the transcription factor is often used in this position, the gene of interest, and it is fused to report a gene often. Well, it is uh, the transcription factor gene is used as an effector for the reporter. Effector is different from reporter. Oh. Uh, uh, so I will introduce those uh, examples later. It's okay to interrupt like this, though uh, I'm pretty happy because uh, you know, I'm very concerned about the shortage of, uh, of the content at all for the length of this lecture. So, uh. oh, well, uh, maybe maybe the other can uh, ask more the uh, more question than me. Uh, so, thank mm. you for the thank you thank you for the explanation. I'm so great uh -huh. about this. Yeah, but uh, 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 I'm happy at all if you can interact and uh, ask some questions. Thank you, Safira. So, uh, Skama Sensei, can I add um, just a very basic information for the other participants? Like, Safira is not from our study program, so she has no any basic about biotechnology, molecular biology. Yeah, so maybe um, a very simple example is the reporter genes may express particular color. For example, GFP showing green color, uh, the gas protein showing blue ah. color. Okay. And then if we fuse these reporter genes with our gene of interest, then we can see, for example, where the protein is located. Will mm. it be in the plasma membrane? in the nucleus or in the other part of the cell mm. or further in the organ level, maybe where is the gene is expressed in the leaf, in the stem, during flower development. So that kind of reporting function of reporter uh, gene will be discussed in this lecture. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so I'll return to you. Uh, some following slides include such examples, but uh, I think I <laughs> should have included more like colorful <laughs> ones. I'm sorry, my mine is not very much colorful. And uh, I think Wikipedia has more colorful pictures. But uh, like so <laughs> please check them also. Uh, uh, they, they are pretty good. So, uh, and uh, I uh, didn't use uh, so many. Okay, the, uh, the I will give you the answers to these questions. So first, the black eye gene is to the repressor to for dark operator. I have, I'm sorry, I have no illustration about that one, but the lack eye gene is a repressor gene to encoding transcription factor. So that binds to this region in the, in the vector, lack operator region, and it will inhibit the transcription of the gene of interest. So in this, Mm. The T7 promoter is a binding site for the T7 RNA polymerase. So the, the, we have to choose appropriate host strain. This is a vector for protein expression in bacteria. And E. coli, Escherichia coli is the most often used bacteria host for this vector. And we have to choose appropriate host for this vector also. 
the host equalized, equalized, equalized the security, security equalized, and the host equalized strain must have T7 RNA polymerase and T7 RNA polymerase. So, so that, that kind of specific host cells must be used for this vector. And because black eye is encoded by this plasmid or vector, so the gene of interest is the transmission of the gene of interest is inhibited by this gene, black eye gene. And, and we can cancel that inhibiting effect by adding some chemical called IPTG or the lactose. So IPTG is a lactose analog and it is not degraded in the cell, so, so it can last and it remains effective. So, so if we add IPTG, then the gene transcription will be turned on. So that's a so important thing. And uh, lac -I, so the answer is uh, that. So lac -I is used for uh, controlling the gene expression precisely. Very simple answer, <laughs> please. So some, it will, it will, if I add more, it will, uh, some genes are toxic to cells and it will inhibit the uh, cell growth. And uh, in that case, we cannot get a lot of proteins of interest because it's still shape. So in that case, it, we want to retrace it first it, until the cells grown enough in a liquid culture. And uh, if after getting a lot of cells, then we can on the gene trans transcription and uh, get the uh, gene product mm, very much. Then we are happy, right? So, it, uh, and uh, that guy is to mm, realize it to make it come through. Mm. Hi. Yes. The, it, the second one, it, if XBA1 is used to clone a gene of interest, it, the protein from it will not be obtained. Why? The, it, it's because so if we use XBA1 site, then so this region will be removed, RBS region will be removed. And uh, that's why the gene expression cannot be obtained. RBS is a, a ribosomal binding site. Shine Dalgano sequence. Do you know Shine Dalgano sequence? So it's kind of regulatory sequence for the prokaryotic gene expression or translation. Mm, at the protein translation. And uh, at the, this site is, at the, this site is uh, AG with the sequence and uh, bound by ribosome. So, so this is necessary for the, uh, yeah, the, for the transcript to be translated into protein. The, uh, if we use XBA1, the, this, this region will be removed. The, from XBA1 to any of this restriction site will be removed. So it, RBS will, will also be removed. And uh, I know that's why the it, protein of interest can be obtained. The, and, uh, when I did it, and, uh, I found it. And uh, I so, put the RBS back by so, synthesizing the and, uh, double strand DNA with this sequence, to AG with sequence into XBA1 side. And so I just inserted it. And then uh, the protein expression was obtained actually. So uh, that uh, further experiment confirmed that uh, RBS is pretty important in the uh, expression system. And uh, uh, I <laughs> strongly felt that uh, I need to, needed to understand the feature the first <laughs> before I made that kind of uh, mistake or it uh, the, the third question is what should be done for the three prime end of the gene to be cloned if it is uh, fused to histag? Uh, I think this is kind of difficult, but uh, uh, the thing we need to do is to delete stop codon of the gene of interest. And uh, make the codon of the gene to in frame to his star. In frame. 
Yeah, uh, if there is a, one or two insertion between extra bases between the gene of interest, the codon of the gene of interest and the codon of histag, then the histag will not work. It will become different codon from histag at histidine, and uh, it will not translate it as histag. So, uh, the stop codon removal and uh, so codon optimization or the you know, making it in frame is necessary. So this is the answer. I think this is pretty difficult. Actually, I was thinking about a difficult question, and uh, <laughs> I'm afraid this is very difficult. So if you are interested, uh, please ask me later. So by so if we have time, you can post directly ask me. So during this session, and uh, you can also send me an email, and I will try to elaborate. <laughs> okay. Mm. Anyway, the understanding the features is important. Mm. Hi. The next uh, to, is uh, I hope the colorful part uh, to report a gene and protein. Right. The to report a genes are genes that are used to report any biological processes. Yeah, so how can they do so? And uh, mm, I, know, I think I was already giving some answers. The, so, so color is one way, and uh, another way is chemiluminescence, and uh, the third one is fluorescence. I think these are almost all at all as the indicators uh, by the report. Uh, and uh, are you able to answer what are these? Uh, no, I think color is okay, but uh, chemiluminescence and fluorescence can be confused. And uh, uh, fluorescence can be included in chemiluminescence, probably. Uh, if we use fluorescence in a, uh, uh, if we use chemiluminescence in a broader meaning. But um, uh, uh, I'm, I usually distinguish uh, chemiluminescence and uh, fluorescence from each other. So uh, are you able to answer it? <laughs> Chai? Ada yang mau mencoba menjawab apa yang dipahami mengenai itu apa uh, perbedaan warna chemiluminescence dan fluorescence dalam hal reporter genes? I'm transferring your question in bahasa. Uh, Mas Rizky, please. Oke, okay, uh, thank you, Miss Sinto. Um, I'd like to remember about what I got before, but a little bit confused, not, uh, not really confused, but I don't know, like, not really confident to, to say that, but uh, I want to say it but, uh, for the first question that by color, so like Miss Sinto said about using the, the gust or using the uh, GFP, uh, some of the gene that we add into the plasma membrane will be bright into the different color so the scientists will understand will be what's that will know that the the gene is really uh, is uh, added into the membrane cell and the chemiluminescence uh, chemiluminescence is using chemical something like chemical to extract the to make mark or something like uh i don't know exactly about this one about the 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 part two and also the, the part three by fluorescence is using uv or something like a light to <clears throat> to make the 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 report genes uh what's that produce some color or something like that i don't know <laughs> so uh please uh give me some uh thank you so much i'm so sorry before uh -huh. uh, okay okay and um, i think it's almost correct <laughs> I will also explain about color. So the color is it generated by absorption of certain light, certain wavelengths of light. So and we can see the light of the wavelengths from like 360 nanometer to like 650 nanometer. It, it, it may be not correct, but so it's something like that. So we are seeing some very narrow bands of 
light. Light has so, so many you know, wavelengths, but、uh, we are seeing、uh, those lights as the color. The, 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 あの、what we are seeing in this case, えっと、is not emitting any light.Light source is emitting light, and, えっと、color, color, anything colored, えっと、is absorbing that light.So, えっと、that stuff is not generating color.So, in this slide, えっと、we can see black thing, and, えっと、あ、これはライトだ。<笑>これはライトだから違う。<笑>えっと、ダメだ。いい、not good example. あと、うん。まあいいや。えっと、それって、うん。あのー、えっと、カラーイズサムシングライクサート。えっと、ライト reflected by any object. And, うん。えっと、だ、えっと、absorbed light is in a certain range. The chemical luminescence is a light emitted by some substance. It is obtained when, very often when any chemical is converted by another and other extra energy. So when some chemical is converted to another chemical, so extra energy will be generated and it can be a light. うん。で、いつだけ見るミネスです。うん。あ、で、えっと、in that terms, fluorescence is similar. うん、but, えっとね、fluorescence is like, うんとね、in a narrower meaning, so, it's a chemiluminescence generated by light. えっと、some light, certain, Light, certain wavelengths of light can excite anything. It will nanda, excite the substance like GFP. And when GFP, the excited GFP it is nanda, it go back to the so, initial state, so the so energy will be generated and、uh, it will emitted, and so it is. Observed as light, and that's a fluorescence. And so, the, ano, more easily, and so, we, for, for example, in GFP, and so, we use blue light to excite it, and we see green light to, and so, as a result, and so, it's a fluorescence. And so, use some light and get some light. <laughs> and so, for chemical luminescence, we will not use light to, and so, see, see the resulting light. And so, we, Add some chemical without light and、uh, get some light from the reaction, chemical reaction. So,、uh, often catalyzed by any protein.、Uh, that, that, that's actually an important protein. So,、uh, mm, and, uh, probably it's difficult to understand without、uh, directly using them, but、uh, so, mm, and chemical luminescence and fluorescence can be distinguished. So, mm, and, uh, mm. Something like that. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? You are too difficult. I think it's difficult to understand.、Uh, uh, 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 when I was a student,、uh, it was difficult to understand. So,、uh. Okay.、Uh, can I move on? Okay. Yes, please. I. Put some notes of your explanation in the chat. So mm. Ah, mm. later, please um,、mm. re um, review the text whether it's correct or not. <laughs> Just to help to the participants to、uh, catch the information. Okay, okay. thank you. These are the examples of reporters. And gas is one example. And this is beta glucuronidase. 
and uh, so like this is kind of enzyme. The, so the second one is uh, look or luciferase, and uh, this is also enzyme. And uh, this uh, generates like, chemiluminescence. The third one is GFP, the green fluorescent protein, and its variants. Uh, and, uh, GFP is uh, interesting and uh, useful. <laughs> I love it. And uh, mm, GFP is a problem. And uh, other FP genes, the FP is fluorescent proteins. Mm. Yeah, I think GFP is uh, the most often used one as FP, but uh, other FPs are present and they are also used as reporter genes. IP genes and uh, other reporter genes are also present. Yeah, so for this, I will explain one by one. Yeah, so I'm sorry for uh, character, character. Yeah, so gas gene is a bacterial, uh, so gas gene is present in bacteria and also human. Um, but uh, for plant study, the bacterial gas gene, UEDA, is Often used. Yeah, so we can choose substrates for uh, this UEDA uh, gene product and uh, mm, to choose to choose a way to detect uh, to its activity or uh, to, uh, to report activity. Yeah, the first example is X group. Uh, I cannot pronounce this one, but uh, too long. But uh, uh, this is uh, often used in the substrate. And this is uh, ah, when this is converted to uh, products by the gas gene, so that product uh, includes ah, uh, that, that product so includes uh, water insoluble blue substances. And uh, this is uh, used gas staining. Uh, uh, if this is converted to, to that product, to, that is insoluble. That's why it can stay in certain uh, specific region in the cell or uh, in the cell or tissue or organ. And uh, so uh, that's why it can stay there. If it's soluble, it, it will move and uh, it cannot be used for uh, visualizing the uh, activity of promoters. Uh, uh, to the second one is. Uh, and uh, uh, the products of this one uh, include water soluble yellow substances. So uh, this is soluble one, and this is uh, used to, uh, to for the parametric, re parametric method for reporter assay, to uh, effector reporter assay. Uh, I will not give the example of it, but uh, color, color dependent method. This is used for color dependent evaluation of the uh, promoter activity, not in living cells. The, the third one is MUG, and uh, uh, this is uh, the product from this one includes uh, fluorescent substances, chemicals. So, uh, Mm. And this is fluorescent uh, substance. And uh, so this is more sensitive than this one. So, mm. uh, and, uh, and, uh, lower activity of, for example, promoter can be detected by this fluorescent substance than by this one. And, uh, parametric method. Yeah, this is also soluble. So, mm, and, uh, just used for uh, to report type of the assay, something like that. Uh, here is an example, and uh, this is easy to understand, right? I hope so. <laughs> so, uh, 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 so, in this example, you know, these are from Wikipedia uh, for uh, so gas reporter. And uh, uh, I was also doing uh, gas staining by, uh, by myself uh, for the gene of my interest, but uh, 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 this was better, so I'm using this one. And, uh, in this experiment, the researchers fused the rice embryo specific promoter to gas gene and introduced this construct into rice and subjected its seed for gas stain. And as a result, we can see blue color present in the embryo region. 
Mm. Okay. The, this is also rice. The right one is also rice. And the, in this example, so rice aluron layer specific promoter is fused to gastin and introduced into rice so, as a left one. And we can see that the embryo has no little color. A little color, but a little color, not, not so much color as the left one. And uh, instead, we can see the uh, blue color in the surround, surrounding region, the Aluron layer region. The, so, uh, in the way like this, we can visualize in which region in the tissue or organ the promoter is active. Uh, in this example, the promoter was already suggested to to suggest that ah, the promoter was already it, known to be specific in those it, cell types. And uh, it, the experiments are kind of confirmatory, I think. Uh, but uh, it, this kind of experiments can be done for the promoter with unknown activity also. And, uh, in that way, we can see if we, if we perform the gas stain with that kind of promoter, we can see the specificity of the promoter, the activity of that promoter. Right? Makes sense? Probably no. <laughs> uh, but uh, and, uh, this is uh, kind of uh, most often uh, used as uh, the use of gas. In plants. Okay. The, so here is another example of uh, gas use. So this is uh, the FO, uh, reporter effector experiments. And uh, first, we need to, uh, for this experiment, we need to first uh, prepare these constructs. Okay. So here are three constructs. Reporter construct includes the uh, RD29B gas. Mm. The it, RD29B gas is uh, it, one generated by fusing the RD29B gene promoter to the gas gene. The RD29B promoter has ABRE cassette, and the ABRE is an ABA so response element. Uh, so it, RD29B promoter has a lot of AB, ABA response element or abscisic acid response element. Uh, the, that promoter is fused uh, to, to Tata box and uh, TATA box and then to casting. Uh, and uh, this is the one construct needed for this experiment. And uh, we uh, also need to generate effect uh, to construct like this. And uh, 35 s promoter is a constitutive prom a constitutively active promoter for plants, for almost any plants. And the omega enhancer for translation to efficiency, enhancing trans translation efficiency. And uh, to this is a vector gene. And uh, very often transcription factor, but in this example, not transcription factor. To, these are used as a vector to gene or protein. And these are casein kinases. So protein, to, certain protein kinases. Were well, used in this example. And uh, so the other construct needed for this ex experiment is uh, this internal control so construct. And uh, this is uh, also a reporter uh, construct. E look is, uh, Luciferous, kind of Luciferous. And uh, I. Sorry, I forgot it, what E stands for here, but uh, it, this is uh, the superase and uh, different from gas. This is a point. So, mm. so reporter construct has gas and uh, the different reporter gene is used here. And uh, it is fused with 35 S promoter and constitutively active promoter. The, it, these three kinds of construct will be introduced into some cells so together. Co introduced into some sorry, so some cell. In this case, a rapid process methyl protoplast. 
So, and so in that case, so these effector and internal control genes will be expressed. So because of the 35 s promoter activity. And uh, so if effector gene so can activate or can have something to do with ABRE or RB2090 promoter, then so the expression of gas will be affected. Uh, so that's a theory. And uh, the result is in the panel B. Ah, Sinto san, please. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I need to uh, confirm my understanding about this construct. So uh -huh. we have three uh, constructs here. So we are co-transforming a whole cell with three plasmid, or whether this is one construct with three cassette. Ah, uh, both ways should be okay. Mm, both ways should be okay. But uh, um, I... I think, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly at what was done in this study, but uh, um, this should be from three plasmids, I think. Oh. Uh, three different plasmids was, uh, at all, were all transformed into cells, I think. Mm. Thank Probably. you. Uh. <laughs> uh. The, it, uh, this is a result. The top one is a control. And the vector control should be the one where effector plus meat has no effector gene. Mm. In this case, some gas act and the sorry at all. And the x-axis shows the relative activity of gas and the activity. The gas activity divided by the Lucifer's activity, normalized activity of gas. So this is used as a control to normalize how many cells are transformed in that experiment. So we can regard this one as a gas activity, basically. X axis as the gas activity. And uh, ano, ito, without the effect, a certain level of uh, gas was observed. And uh, ito, in the presence of abscisic acid, the gas activity was enhanced. And uh, that's because of the presence of ABRE acid. Mm. This is abscisic acid response element found by uh, ito, group A B zip transcription factors activating the, ito, and uh, they activate the expression of uh, yeah, ito, promoter activity of RD2090 promoter. So uh, ito, that's why ito, in the presence of ABA, uh, gas activity was enhanced. And ito, the point is this. So in the presence of these the gene or protein in the effector construct, so we can see these at the top four, uh, sorry, at top two, at CK2 alpha one and CK2 alpha two. So in the presence of them, we can see that the gas activity was enhanced, even in the absence of ABA, and in the presence of ABA also, compared to the top one control. The, it, we can see that the third and fourth effector were not affected. Uh, not, not effective at all as the uh, epitope 2 effectors. And uh, so we can also see that the bottom four effectors are all repressing the, the activity of you know, this promoter or gas activity. Right? In the, even in the presence of ABA, so the activity of gas was very low. So when these four effector genes were present. So and to, from this result, we can see that CK2 alpha 1 CK, and CK2 alpha 2 are uh, promote, promote, uh, to kind of to activators of the uh, to gas activity or RD2090 promoter activity, in, at, at least in this system. And uh, to, 
these, the CK2 beta 1, CK2 beta 2, CK2 beta 3, and CK2 beta 4, are the negative regulator of LG29B promoter or ABR at all gas activity. So, and so this is called the reporter assay or reporter effect assay. And uh, the gas can also be used for this kind of assay. So in this case, the plot plus were uh, broken and uh, so their soup was used for the experiment. Yeah. Right. The next is uh, Lucy Perez. The Lucy Perez is uh, an uh, enzyme so that can so generate uh, the light by converting some chemicals. And uh, these are the relationship between the reciperase and uh, the substrates, so chemiluminescent substrates. Uh, so the, the fire applied reciperase so will use reciperin as a substrate. And the renida reni form means reciperase. And uh, their relatives are uh, using so soelen terazine, soelen terazine. So mm. so uh, so these are all marine, marine organisms. And uh, I think this guy, I don't like the shape of these organisms, but uh, so they are marine ones. Uh, and uh, some are pretty, I hope. Uh, and uh, E. coli is from, what so this is also from this is also living in the sea, and this is also using soilian terazine. bacteria also has reciprocal and its substance at substrate is rumazin. Anyway, and these substrates are different from each other. So, so if we use different kinds of reciprocal, we can change the substrate, and it is sometimes useful. So here is an example of Luciferase reporter assay. So in the previous example, the for reporter to construct, gas was used, but in this case, Luciferase was used. The, the effect in this case was BR work E65. And this is the transcription factor from Brassica Rapa, the Chinese cabbage. Hakusai <laughs> or Chinese cabbage. And uh, it is used to certify this promoter. And, uh, mm. So uh, no, these people wanted to see whether this uh, transcription factor can activate uh, the uh, promoters of interest like this. Ah, the, uh, in this example, uh, in the reporter construct, uh, there is another expression facet. And uh, it is a certified best promoter with uh, Renira autoreciperase. Renira reciperase is this one. And, uh, uh, and uh, so this reciperase should be firefly reciperase. Uh, so, so that's why we can uh, distinguish the signal from. Uh, uh, my baby's back <laughs> <laughs> from the school. <laughs> no. uh, uh, sorry. The, uh, no, we can distinguish the uh, uh, signal from uh, Renina reciprocal from Firefly reciprocal because uh, 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 if we change the substrate. So that's why uh, this can work. So, uh, so just to confirm, so the use of uh, the REN controlled by the 35 as promoter is mm. like a control. Yes. Uh, to be compared with the Luciferase expression later. Is that? So, mm, uh, no, they, uh, uh, the most important uh, uh, the value they wanted to obtain should be the firefly reciprocal activity. Mm. Mm. Uh, to, mm, as you said, the Renira reciprocal was used as the, uh, for the normalization of the normalization. Okay, understood. Thank you. Mm. Mm. The, it, uh, yeah, and uh, they were, it, uh, in, at, as in the previous example, it was introduced into so, some cells. Oh, tobacco, uh, as far as I remember, tobacco. 
maybe wrong, but uh, anyway, they were introduced together in Dell, sorry, and, oh, sorry. and uh, after some incubation, the fire applied CPLS was normalized by linear CPLS and uh, expressed like this. Uh, so we can see that uh, in the presence of this worky 65 gene, or the protein as a effector. So all the, uh, the promoter activity was enhanced. Mm. Right? Mm. That should be right. So uh, that, that suggests that uh, this transcription factor interacted with these promoters and enhanced the uh, fire-fly respiratory activity in this ex experiment. The, it, uh, here is another example of everything you see the race. The, it, uh, in this example, the RB29A gene promoter was fused to Lucifer race and uh, introduced into Arabidopsis plants. The, and, uh, and after introducing this gene, so the, the plant was uh, it, uh, made homozygous for this plant gene. And uh, it will put into some mutagenizing it will dangerous chemical, uh, <laughs> dipped into chemical, and uh, mutation was induced. And uh, it will, the resulting seeds were sown in the it will stress plates. And uh, their reciprocal the signals were observed under unstressed and stressed condition. It will, in this case, cold stress was given to them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So these are plants. Is it understandable that these are plants? <laughs> uh, and these are Arabic seedlings, uh, very small plants. And uh, so from B to so B, the it will, signals are showing the luciferous signals, like uh, emitted by these plants. In theory, all of them should have a reciprocal gene like this. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. it difficult to see, but uh, it under unstressed condition, it almost uh, all the plants have no it signal. But uh, it here, the highlighted one, it has a signal. And uh, this is called the cos mutant. Yeah. In D1 and D2, cold stress was given to the plants. And after that, the luciferase activity was detected like this. And this is a longer exposure version. And this is a shorter exposure version. And in the longer exposure version, the signals are generally strong because of the long exposure. But there is a at plant that was generating the low signal, the weak signal, and this was called the LOS mutant. So even at also, I know RB twenty nine is a it was stress responsive gene, and its expression is enhanced by multiple stresses. Like, I know, and drop is a good one, but also at cold stress and ABS at ABA treatment and so stress. And, uh, mm. so, and this is kind of expected result. A lot of plants are generating a lot of respiratory activity, but uh, and, uh, this plant was not doing so. And uh, so and, uh, that's why they thought that uh, this is mutant. They, it, uh, in this example, the exposure period is shorter. And uh, it, uh, e even under this condition, so one plant was showing strong signal and uh, it, uh, this is this was called the FOS at all mutant. The it cos mutant is this one, and uh, this is constitutively uh, const, uh, this has a constitutive stress response. Right? It, uh, even under unstressed condition, so it was showing the same. And uh, it, uh, LOS mutant is low stress response mutant. Mm. It, uh, even it, uh, under the stressed condition. It was showing the um, low disability activity. 
the host is, it has a high stress response. It, in the, it, that's because so it was showing the strong signal like this. It, it a stronger signal than the other plants under the stress condition. So, I know, so I, I'm afraid this may be difficult to see to the to difference between the signal uh, to in the signal strengths, but the CPLS can be used in this way to so screening for mutants and that have different responses to environmental stresses or other stimuli. Mm. Okay. And uh, this is another example of the CPLS we use. So this is a split reciprocase for protein protein interactions. So in this system, we split the reciprocating, uh, sorry, the reciprocase into N terminal part and C terminal part and fuse them to the protein of interest, in this case X and Y. And if the protein X, proteins X and Y interact with each other, the reciprocase so N part and N terminal part and C terminal part of receiver race will come close to each other. And so the receiver race activity will be reconstituted. And then the receiving will be converted to the product and the light will be emitted. So by this way, we can see whether the protein will be rest in are interacting with each other. And uh, this is an uh, example. And so, mm, I, know, I think this is tobacco. And uh, it, yeah, the it protein of interest was prepared like, it, like this. And, uh, it, it, uh, they were interested in the interaction between the OS big one, so rice, the rice big one the protein, and uh, and OSXLG2. I'm kind of familiar with this protein, and G protein, probably, and the membrane protein. I think they were interested in this combination of proteins. And this was OSPPI was used as a negative control. The two constructs expressing these. It X group N and Y group C were prepared for each of these combinations, and uh, those two constructs were infiltrated together in these regions of tobacco leaf. Mm. It, uh, this is a Lucifer signal obtained, and uh, we can see that uh, in the left part, so there was no signal, and uh, in the right part, there was signal. Mm. Ah, this is receiver signal. Uh, it, this should be light, but uh, you know, expressed as, uh, mm. uh, as this uh, and, uh, to color chart. So uh, this means that uh, this can be interpreted as a uh, uh, positive interaction between those proteins. Yes. Ah, just to confirm, so in this experiment, we can see that the um, BIK1 mm. protein is interacting with the SLG2. Mm. That is not interacting with the PPI. Am I correct? Yes, I know, that's correct. Mm. I thought this result can be interpreted like that. Mm. Because the receptor activity was obtained, and the protein should be interacting with each other. So yeah. in this experiment, is a transient expression? Yes, uh, I, know, I think this is transient. Mm. Oh. Thank the, you. Uh, mm, two proteins of interest were to expressed by uh, agrobacteria, I think, mm, infiltrating the agrobacteria cells into tobacco. Yeah. If. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So it's not transforming the plants, the whole plants. Mm. Mm. Uh, no, but uh, not, not split reciprocates, but uh, I don't know. I'm talking about the BFC later. And uh, for BFC, uh, stable transient plants are sometimes generated 
for some specific purpose. Well, so uh, th that may be true for this experiment as well. I've never seen such an example, but uh, uh, some people may have been doing so. Yeah, it, uh, and the panel B is a quantification for um, the panel A, and the panel C is a confirmation of the presence of those proteins between these leaves by, by Western blocking. And uh, uh, if you use report the gene or any protein type, Western blocking it can be it easily performed compared to it the Western blocking using specific antibody for a protein. I mean, it if we want to directly detect the protein X and protein Y, we need to prepare two kinds of antibody to specific to those two proteins. And the raising antibody can take time and cost. So and if we use tag, we can just buy some commercial antibodies for those tags and reporters. Because those reporters and tags are often used, so antibodies, commercial antibodies are often available for them. Uh, and uh, it can be cheaper and uh, more and, uh, useful uh, for doing uh, Western blocking. Uh, that's another vaccine using, to, in, using the, uh, those tags and reporters. Uh, anyway, uh, to, uh, split triciferis is kind of becoming popular, I feel. Uh, uh, that's a uh, protein protein interaction assay. So next is GFP and FP genes and others. GFP and its derivatives are interesting, <laughs> so I think. So GFP is FP isolated from Echolea, Echolen, sorry, Echolescence. It's by Osamu Shimomura, and uh, Shimomura Sensei is a Japanese person. And uh, so this, uh, the Shimomura Sensei, uh, 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 was a uh, uh, discoverer of the uh, uh, GFP. What uh, it. Uh, Shimura Sensei is the person who at the first isolated the GFP from this this organism. At we call it Kurage, and I forgot to at forgot how to call it in English. And I'm sorry for that. Jellyfish, jellyfish, it's jellyfish. And the Shimura Sensei went to get a lot of jellyfish with his family, and that story was good for me. <laughs> Interesting to me. So, I thought it was to get a lot of jellyfish by using the family power. Uh, he isolated the FTFP from jellyfish. Uh, the, the good thing about GFP is that it's small, it's 27 kb, and uh, it's hydrophilic and stable. Uh, no, easy to handle. The, the original version of GFP uh, is excited by UV, but uh, later many uh, the scientists got interested in, interested in GFP, and uh, a lot of variants uh, have been made to improve fluorescence spectra and the brightness uh, of GFP. So, uh, no, mm. The, to, these are the GFP derivatives. The, uh, to, uh, no, I, I hope you have ever, uh, maybe not true, but uh, no, from the original version of GFP, uh, no, YFP, PFP, and BFP were generated. generated. And uh, you know, I showed them with the color. So this is a GFP variant. And these mutations were introduced into the original version of the GFP. And these mutations are to make the excitation light from UV to blue light. 
uh, and enhance the brightness. So uh, this was uh, a very important uh, mutation. And uh, this made it possible to express the GFP stably in human cells, uh, animal cells. And uh, uh, because of this one, uh, 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 certain pro uh, the subcellular localization of certain protein was uh, detected by GFP, and uh, those guys got the Nobel Prize with similar uh, I think three people got the Nobel Prize because of GFP. And uh, one was Simon sensei as a discoverer, and uh, the other two were the people who utilized the GFP well so for the research. So, mm. yeah, and the EGFP mutation was a kind of key mutation for those later studies. And uh, so YFP are the uh, GFP variants uh, that have uh, yellow, uh, near yellow, Color. Actually, uh, so the color is like uh, green uh, to my eyes, <laughs> so even if it's called uh, it YFP, but uh, 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 it is called YFP. And uh, mm. uh, so these are the mutations for them. And uh, the mutations are close to the fluorophore, so the region that is responsible for making the color for the fluorescence. Fluorophore. fluorophore. Mm. Mm. So uh, it, it's relevant to. Uh, the mutation sites are relevant to the flow of our uh, positions. Uh, the CFP is a CN, it's a CN FP, it's a CN fluorescent protein, and uh, they are also uh, used by these mutations. Uh, uh, the citrine and the cerulean uh, for them are uh, uh, bright versions of the YP and the CFP, respectively. Yeah, the BFP is a uh, it most blue it FP from the original version of GFP. And uh, so this was made by this one. Okay. The it, uh, other FPs are also used and uh, it red FP variants isolated from it, uh, this one, it corals, uh, it also popular it, uh, as a reporter gene. So the most popular one is probably DS red. So the red frozen protein. Uh, I don't remember the, the species name exactly, but uh, you know, DS is a species name, and it's it also for our related species. And the MTR is a variant of DS red. Mm. The, it, uh, GFP and DS red has uh, to have uh, different sequences, but uh, their structures are similar. So it's interesting, I think. Mm. Beta barrel, it is called beta barrel structure to get the light and to emit the light. At all, at many other variants with different excitation emission spectra were generated at from at all, different species. So it is at all, diversifying. <laughs> uh, so FPs are diversifying. And I think it's useful and interesting. And to uh, and the, at all, those. Diversified FP include photo activated, photo convertible, and fluorescent timer, etc. <laughs> photo activated FP is a FP that is that becomes active only after getting some lights. So um, they are not fluorescent in a steady state, but uh, once we expose them to certain light, then they will be activated. And this is the photo activated uh, FPs. And the photo convertible is the uh, uh, FPs that uh, emit uh, fluorescent fluorescence, two kinds of fluorescence. So uh, uh, in the steady state, uh, uh, it is uh, emitting uh, specific fluorescence. And uh, once we uh, uh, expose them to a specific light, then uh, uh, they will it will emit different so fluorescence from the original one. It will like to yellow one, first yellow one, and then red one, well, something like that. Yeah, the fluorescent timers are it will like short time, it will short lifetime fluorescent proteins. And uh, as a reporter, it will, this is kind of good. Yeah. They become fluorescent, the fluorescent, and then they will die. <laughs> so, uh, so they, they can be stable only for a short time. 
Okay. So, let's see the example. Uh, and this is an uh, example of CFP. Uh, so, colorful one. Uh, so this is uh, from my paper. The, uh, no, I uh, was handling a uh, gene so called the big one. This is from a rabbit of this. And uh, uh, yeah, so in this example, I expressed big one GFP and the uh, POSF21 and ATB29 are uh, homologs of big one. Now, I expressed these proteins as GFP shoots proteins in Arabidopsis stably, uh, the whole plant of uh, Arabidopsis. And uh, I uh, put the uh, root of them, roots of them uh, in the uh, water. To hypoosmotic solution and uh, observe the GFP signals. And uh, so the, what I thought interesting is that uh, the GFP signals were first detected in the cytosol, but later so it was detected in the nuclei like this. So dots are nuclei in these pictures. And then so they were detected back in the cytosol. Yeah, that uh, phenomenon was not observed in the GFP alone. So mm, I know, that's why I got interested in this one. And uh, mm, I, know, I studied uh, a lot <laughs> for one. I don't know if I can say I worked hard for them, but <laughs> I, know, I got fond of this one because of this one. Another example is using M3 and GFP together. In this experiment, in the experiment for the right pictures, sorry. So M3 and GFP was, it were introduced into onion cells together. The bottom one is showing that GFP alone, M3 alone, in the overall picture. And the top two are showing that GFP fused to a transcription factor gene from asparagus. Do you know asparagus? No. <laughs> vegetable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. so, yeah. so, AO MIP35 and AOMS are, the, are those transcription factors from asparagus, and they are fused to GFP. And, uh, Mm. And we can see that the only limited region in the cell is the green in these examples. Yeah. In contrast, M3 can be so found, could be found in the cytosolic regions. So, so by this kind of example, uh, uh, if the experiment, we can see the uh, subcellular localization, and in this case, nuclear localization of this protein. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, for the GFP or FP, so, um, this is kind of a complex experiment, but uh, showing uh, good things for the uh, so FP. The uh, so BFC and FRED for protein protein interactions uh, so are used uh, sometimes. PFC is a bimolecular fluorescence complementation, and the threat is a fluorescence resonance energy transfer. In this figure, the number one should be for PFC. In, for the PFC, we will prepare a split YFP or a split GFP like this, like a split resistance. We split the GFP into N terminal part and C terminal part. And uh, we will fuse them to, to the proteins of an interest. In this, for example, it will protein A and protein B, respectively. Uh, we will so, co introduce them into some cells. And uh, if the it will protein A and protein B interact with each other, the it will N terminal part and the C terminal part of the GFP will come close to each other, and uh, they will become fluorescent in that case. The split GFP so, is not fluorescent, and uh, only if they come close to each other, uh, they become fluorescent. 
that's a theory for PFC. えっと、for the threat, えっと、the threat is shown in number three, and the negative interaction is shown in number two. で、えっと、for threat, we will fuse to protein A to, in this example, YFP, and protein C, えっと、to CFP. This should be CFP and this should be YFP. で、えっと、if the protein A and protein C interact with each other, so these proteins will come close to each other. And、uh, えっと、some fluorescence、so、from CFP will be、so、transmitted to YFP.、Yeah. えっと、as an excitation light source.、Yeah. で、えっと、this is a fluorescence resonance energy transfer. で、えっと、in this case, the fluorescence, えっと、lifetime for the CFP will be decreased. And, えっと、using some specific microscope, we will detect that, あの、decrease in the fluorescence lifetime by the threat. And, C. And, in that case, the protein of interest will be interacting with each other. So, if that, えっと、lifetime is not changed by the Protein A and P, then they are not interacting with each other.、うん、that, that kind of negative interaction is shown in the panel too.、Yeah. うん、they are far from each other, and no energy transfer will be happening. And in that case, the lifetime for CFP is unchanged. で、えっと、The pattern four is showing the BFC threat. So, this is a combination of BFC and threat.、うんえっと、in threat, the, えっと、in this example, the CFP is called donor and the YFP is called acceptor. And in the panel three, regular YFP was used as an acceptor. And in the panel four, the, 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 the リプラスティケットは P is used as a acceptor、うん。で、えっと、the theory is pretty、うん、あの the same as the、うん、あの panel three. So if the えっと protein A and B are coming close to each other, the wife is reconstituted. And if the C can えっと come close to that complex, then えっと C F P to So the reconstituted YFP energy transfer will happen. And uh, it will, if we in that, it will, in that state、uh, detect the lifetime for CFP, then it should be decreased compared to the original one. The, it will, the five and six are showing sorry, the importance of the conformation. Sorry. Conformation. うん、if the orientation of the YFP and CFP are not good, あの、threat will not occur, even though the protein A to C are interacting with each other. And it's a case えっと for BFC also. It's a case for BFC also. あの、うん。うん、あの、this kind of situation、うん、is possible for regular BFC without CFP. So, あの、the orientation of protein is important. Okay. で、so、this is a, えっと、example of the result. So, うん。で、あの、this, えっと、picture has a lot of information. えっと、we should look at this, えっと、figure like this. えっと、this is one cell, in one cell. うん、えっと、Panel B and C are for one cell, and panel D, E, and F should be for one cell, and panel G, H, and I should be for one cell. And in this one cell, in the top, in the top case, so CRFP, HV bump 731 was expressed. So this is CFP. CRFP is C, CFP. And the CFP HV down to 721 was expressed in the test, for example. And in the middle example, 
、えっと、this protein, the same CFT field protein was expressed with these proteins. So、NYFT, HV, and ROR2, and HV s n a f 34 CYFT. So this is for PFC, and this is for CFT. They are trying to show the BFC threat in this、uh, experiment. So in the top example, only one protein was expressed. And in the middle and bottom example, so three proteins were expressed together in one cell. The right picture is showing the CFP lifetime as shown here by p a r a c h a i In the bottom example, that CFP fused protein was expressed, and these two proteins were expressed. And the difference between the middle one and the bottom one is that HVSNAP34 are orientation of this protein. So、in the middle example, so PYFP was switched to the C terminal of the SNAP34. In the bottom example, the CYFP was switched to the N terminal of the SNAP34. So this is the difference. The difference is only in the orientation or the position of the CYFP tag. All the other conditions are the same between the, the middle one and the bottom one. The, 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 the result of interest is、uh, the right one, the、like、green, or fluorescent lifetime imaging. The,、uh, we can, the, we should, uh, the, uh, the, uh, there are several points of interpreting this.、Uh, so the first one is that、uh, we can see the signals of YFP like this. And、uh, this means that BFC is okay in both of these cases. So, orientation about these are okay. And the YFP part is coming close to each other in both of these orientations. And another thing we can see is that the pattern of the CYFP, ah, sorry, 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 CFP fused to protein. And without these two proteins, So、the CFP fused protein is,、uh, was observed in the cell periphery like this. But、uh, in the presence of these two proteins, so the, again, so signals are like this, so aggregated.、Mm. So, so this is so another evidence that、uh, these three proteins are interacting with each other. Okay. Okay. So the most important one is the、uh, right one. えっと、we can see that、えっと、this color is not as blue, is not so blue as this one, right? <笑>えっと、で、ライフ、えっと、ダフロレセンス、えっと、なんだ、えっと、ライフタイム is longer、えっと、if the color is very, very, えっと、very blue. And if it shifted to red like this, then the、えっと、ライフタイム is shorter. And we can see that the middle one, えっと、in the middle one, So、CFP lifetime is shorter than the bottom one or the top one. Okay. So this means that threat is happening here, and so no threat is happening in the bottom one. So, so in this case, the, the, the middle one is showing that the orientation is right, and it is further showing that those three proteins are forming the complex. えっと、they are close to each other. で、あの、even without the threat, あの、probably some interactions can be suggested by this result, あの、this so change of the localization of this CFP is protein and the BFC. うん。あと、あの、うん。えっと、this is kind of typical result of BFC threat. Good one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was complicated. But,、uh, the, the other reporter proteins include these, so beta galactosidase,、uh, laxi.、Uh, this is a good one. s i m p l e s i g n smiling. And、uh, I like this one too. A <laughs> very simple one. An E. coli, four E. coli, or bacteria. And we can use color metric method to、uh, 
ピックアップしたところにプリントして、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、ほくろに、The power of this is also like, the, like that.、Um, like alkaline phosphatase, it is used for、uh, detecting some another, like other reporter using the、uh, blue color generating,、uh, color generating substrate or、uh, chemi luminescence generating substrate. Ah, so, sorry.、Uh, uh, uh, yeah. So,、uh, で、あの、these are not as colorful as FP. <笑>、うん、not so many examples as FP. So,、うん、just in front of this one. えっと、the last part. えっと、protein tags are like this. えっと、GST and MVP, his tag, small tags and others. で、えっと、うん。で、and I will explain about them one by one also. えっと、first, GST, MVP, and h i s t a g GST, sorry, あ,あ、sorry, sorry. えっと、the GST is glutathion S transferase. So, MVP is maltose binding protein. h i s t a g is hexahistidin. And it's kind of variants. The small tags include flag, HA, MIC, And、uh, other ones, and、uh, others.、Uh, yeah. Yeah. So GST, MVP, and HISTAG.、Uh, GST is a、uh, 27KD soluble protein, and、uh, it binds reduced glutathione. And,、um, mm. it, uh, this kind of、uh, Ligand or the small molecule interacting with these tag is import, kind of important. So I'm introducing the affinity chromatography dependent so protein purification so later.、Mm. So、basically, this interaction is for purifying them by affinity chromatography.、Mm -hmm. the MVP is maltose binding protein and the 43KD, which is larger, a little larger than GST,、uh, but it's soluble. The maltose and amylose f i n d i n g activity is hard by them. The histag is 1kd, or the molecular weight of histidine is like 155. So if we multiply 6 to it, it's like 0.9. And it's 0.2. なんだえっと、950 <笑>あ、あ、えっと、900 so, like 1KD and モレキュラマスイズ 1KD and あのヒスティリンイズウォーターソリボー but we can if this is used with protein we can induce aggregate often so it's kind of problematic but it is also used for anyway so, because it binds metals such as nickel And the cobalt heavy metals.、Mm. Okay. Heavy metal dependent chromatography is well, we will call it IMAC,、uh, immobilized, chroma, uh, immobilized metal affinity chromatography.、Uh, not computer.、Uh, the histag is、uh, anyway, used for that IMAC.、Okay. And flag HA, MIC, and others. The flag tag is DYK, DD, DDK. This is all. So it's very small. So consisting of eight amino acids. And DDDK is enterokinase cut site. So if we fuse this tag to a protein of interest, we can cut this as a tag by enterokinase. And this is sometimes useful. And HA is hemagglutinin tag from some animal virus. And this is also small, YPYHA. So, and this is also small. 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 And
EVYA. And the nectar is also formed by RAS, and this is also small, so E Q K L I S H A A E E T L. The another example of small tag is strep tag, so W S H P Q F E K. And the strep tag can interact with strep, it was a protein called streptactin or streptabitin. And that interaction can be useful from affinity chromatography as well. And other examples of tags are S tag, PRX tag, etc. Uh, I think this is difficult to remember, but uh, anyway, um, so some large tags are used and some small tags are used, and, uh, and they have pros and cons. Larger tags are more likely to inhibit the protein, more, inhibit, more likely to inhibit the function of the protein of interest if they are used to them, uh, generally. And the smaller tags are thought to be uh, less inhibiting the functions of the protein of interest. Okay. This is showing the affinity chromatography of GST. We can buy the agarose or labeled with GSH. GSH is a reduced glutathion. And first, we equilibrate this agarose with GSH, and we then add the protein solution with GST fused proteins. And because GST has affinity to GSH, so the GST fused protein is bound to that resin or agarose. And the other proteins should be whether at all, if they are not interacting with that GST fused proteins, they will be gone. So, it only GST fused proteins will remain on the agarose, and they and then it will wash them to further remove these contaminants. And later, we will elute these proteins by competition by adding the reduced glutathione, and then it we will get this protein solution as a purified protein solution. Okay. This solution is useful for many protein experiments. Yeah, I'm showing the result from the protein purification. So these are showing the, this is showing the Western blot result after the purification. And uh, this is just showing the presence of these proteins. And, you know, this is the position for GST alone, and uh, uh, this is the signal in place to one. And uh, 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 because they are a chimeric protein, so the size is larger than GST alone, uh, they are detected like this. And uh, for GST B52 and GST B30, uh, the positions of those signals are almost the same as the GST alone. So uh, uh, probably there is no. Uh, Use protein. So uh, no, the expression was uh, fading uh, in this case. The, it, uh, I very often to use the purified protein for the it, further protein experiments. Not very often. Uh, it, uh, I mean, when I do the protein purification, the purpose is usually for the protein assay, like this. And, uh, and this is the example, in vitro phosphorylation assay with the purified protein. So in this example, so these upper two, at the top two panels are just to confirm the, the presence of the purified proteins in the purified protein solutions. Mm. So I use the purified protein solutions for Western blotting. And uh, just detected the protein of interest like this. In this case, GSTP1 and uh, MVPCPK21. And uh, in the bottom, so 
I mixed these proteins so with ATP and calcium and uh, incubated them and uh, detected them by the uh, phosphorylated protein specific probe, uh, the phosphatag. Uh, and uh, uh, so I could detect the MVP CPK21 specific signals and the uh, GST BPAN specific signals using that phosphatag. And uh, so uh, in this case, uh, so BPAN can be regarded as uh, phosphorylated by the MVP CPK21. Uh, so they are both clarified form. So uh, it is good. Because, uh, no, it can exclude the possibility that other protein, other contaminating proteins, at uh, phosphorylated to BIP1 or something like that. Uh, so uh, no, using purified proteins uh, is good in this kind of experiment. Uh, another example is gel shift assay uh, mm -hmm. to evaluate the DNA mm -hmm. binding ability of the uh, transcription factors uh, to, or purified proteins. Uh, in this example, uh, GS, again, GSP B1 and GSP B2, these proteins were used. So these proteins were the same as uh, one here. So um, I did this experiment to confirm the protein purification and then used uh, them for gel shift assay like this. Uh, here, the detected uh, one is uh, probe DNA, if 707, uh, sorry, uh, 707 A1 promoter. They, they were mixed with proteins and electrophores, and their signals were detected, and DNA signals were detected by chemical luminescence method. And the, the point is that uh, the, in the presence of the protein of interest, the band will be shifted. So in the presence of GST alone, the probe is uh, detected in this position. And in the presence of uh, so, this one and their home at its home logs, the band were was detected like this in the upper positions. So it will, this can be regarded as a interact as a result of interaction between this deep one and its home logs and PN, the CIP seven seven one promoter in this case. The, 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 this protein purification can be extended to, to study the interaction between those proteins and the small molecule at all, small or large molecules. So this is showing red. So in the purification process, so this can be so in the first example, the GSH was used, but for MVP amylose is used. It will nickel is used for his tag, and antibody is used for some tags. So if we use antibody for purification, it is, it is called the immunoprecipitation experiment, IP or immunoprecipitation. But uh, the experiment handling is pretty much similar between you know, immunoprecipitation and the other purif protein purification by affinity promotability. Okay. The, 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 we will uh, the, then use uh, appropriate tag for uh, according to this reagent. And uh, the, if, if these protein of interest has uh, interactors like X and Y, like this, then the, even after washing, they can remain on the protein of interest. Mm. The, in that case, the, the, these, the, Substances X and Y will be eluted together so with the uh, protein of interest like this in the final step or elution step uh, after the elution step. Uh, this can be protein, DNA, RNA, and uh, I forgot to write, but uh, small molecules are also included, like calcium or heavy metals or whatever. Mm. Uh, so by any way, so we can detect these molecules and then so we can see, uh, we can say that uh, these molecules are interacting with the protein of interest. Mm. So uh, no, many protein, uh, many interaction assays are possible for, uh, pro uh, for the protein and the molecules, but uh, uh, no, some of them are using pretty similar theory for detecting the interacting molecules. 
Yeah, I'm just to introduce some example in the last half of this talk. So this is an example of protein-protein interaction study using the, those protein purification phase. So it is called in vitro proton assay. And uh, in this experiment, uh, so GST DIP1 was uh, it immobilized like this so, um, on the so agarose first. And then so it was data reacted with a purified form of his is tagged ATD prime prime delta protein. Mm. The, it, after reacting them, so the protein was lost. Basically, GSD deep one was lost, was lost and uh, eluted. And uh, it, 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 the presence of his tagged protein was assessed. So there should be, of course, GSD deep one because it is uh, put down. And uh, the interest was uh, in the presence of his ATP prime prime delta. If they interact, if if this protein interact with the uh, one, it should be present in the eluent. And uh, it should uh, it, 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 if the ATP prime prime delta it does not interact with the one, it is not present in the eluent. So uh, no, it is a hypothesis. And uh, no, the result was that uh, it, the ATP prime prime delta it, his tag, sorry. So his tag the ATD prime prime delta was interacting with this one because the signal was mm, detected like this. And uh, the right it, uh, panel in this figure is pretty much similar to the left one. Sorry. But uh, it, uh, in this example, it will be truncated versions of this one was used. Mm. It, uh, N means that N terminal part of this one, and C means uh, C terminal part of this one. So uh, no, the right panel was done to, to narrow down the regions in, it, uh, in the big one interacting with the uh, ATP prime prime delta. Oh, sorry, it, uh, pass, pass is a uh, home of ATP prime prime delta. And, uh, mm, uh, no, the interact and, uh, because the signal was uh, obtained only when GST big one C was used. So uh, it, this means that uh, it, uh, T terminal part of P1 is interacting with pass, and the N terminal part of P1 is not interacting with pass so much as T terminal part. Uh, I saw this one it was a design for experiment and uh, mm. what what the uh, um, gene of interest means. So this is another example of protein purification mediated to, uh, to examination of DNA protein interaction. So the experiment is called chromatin immunoprecipitation or CHIP. And in this example, uh, to chromatin immuno, uh, to immunoprecipitation was performed for the hip one GFP. So, First, hip one GFP was purified by antibody. Because antibody was used to purify it, it is called immunoprecipitation. And after that, so DNA was eluted from the precipitated hip one GFP. And the Presence of CIP 707A1 promoter and CIP 707A3 promoter was checked, uh, was checked by the PCR. And uh, this is showing it. The antibody used is shown here. And the big fan GFP, it, uh, the presence of big fan GFP is shown here. The whole minus, at I use the GFP alone. The, the whole big fan GFP plus, at I use the big fan GFP expressing plans. And we can see that uh, only when antibody, GFP antibody was used to purify with one GFP, the signal of these promoter fragments were obtained. Uh, the, it, uh, this means that the uh, big one GFP and uh, these promoter fragments are interacting with each other. And uh, um, immunoprecipitation is uh, regarded as in vivo experiments. So, uh, no, this is uh, kind of good. This experiment is uh, difficult, but uh, uh, no, good to say that uh, the interaction is in vivo. Uh, so.
。はい。で、あの、I think the last part was difficult, but, あの、this is a summary, very short summary. あの、the important thing is which vector and features to use.、うん、and reporter genes, proteins, and tag genes, proteins are useful. で、あの、it has あの many uses. そう、あの、the thinking about the purpose and,、uh, うん About the purpose is important. And,、uh, mm. Choosing them is、uh, important. So, <laughs> no,、uh, I'm sorry, but、uh, I think this is very difficult. But <laughs> uh, no, uh, this is all from me. So, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Sugama Sensei, for the lecture.、Uh, it's、uh, very important that you are introducing、um, Kin reporting and also tag. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, tech is new because I don't use tech before. So,、um, yeah. thank you very much. So,、um, so, the participants now, if you have any question, we still have some time. I put some summary also in the chat、uh, for easier information to you to grab. But if you need something to、uh, confirm, please just open your mic and ask your question. <laughs> Any... I'm afraid answering the questions on the chat will take time. So I think.、Uh, uh, no, no,、uh, I don't put any question on the chat. The chat only contains my notes <laughs> for the participants. We will. Only the summary. Ah, So we have one participant raising hand. Hi, hi. Yes, please. Yeah, thank、uh, you. I'm going to first. <laughs> Oh, yeah, thank you, Ms. Sinto. And、uh, thank you for Sensei Sugama that、yeah, b r i n g me so many, so many knowledge that、uh, improving my, my understanding about the, the importance of r e p o r t a g e n too. And the question is、uh, I'm, before, I'm so sorry if the question is really basic because it, it, it has been a long time that I keep in touch with、uh, biotechnology, I guess.、Uh -huh. Uh, almost two years, probably. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. uh, okay, the question is、uh, about all of the reported genes that、uh, you said to us, which one the most accurate or the most economic or something like the most useful for general purposes? Uh, uh -huh. I, uh, I'm sorry? Uh, I think it's GFP. Okay, okay.、Mm. Oh, yeah, GFP, yeah. so uh, the, 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 the most、uh, simple sequence is GFP with the Uh, that, that you say to, to, to me that this is really easy to use. So, the FP is really common to use it,、uh, Sensei. FP is, it will, is also useful.、Uh. Oh, okay. And also, I want to ask you about the, I'm sorry,、uh, about the e v e c t o r gene. e v e c t o r gene that you say before,、uh, this、um, may enhance, enhance the result of gas. So, it is just a specific gene for enhancing the gas、uh, expression, or probably we can use for another、uh, purposes like、uh, to increase the gene expression or target the gene expression, or just specific for gas. In this, in this experiment,、uh, we can regard the data as like. うんと、カイネスだからちょっと難しいんだけど、あの、えっと、the point is that, えっと、プロモあ、the point is promoter, the, えっと、upstream the gas gene, えっと、this promoter was used, RD29B promoter, or ABRE, うん、sequences. で、あの、because of this gene, えっと、this was activated, and that's a point. うん。で、あの、You can use any kind of this gene,、uh, any kind of gene for this vector position. And actually, this is not very typical pattern. So these are protein kinases, and、uh, uh, very typical pattern is transcription factor. So some transcript, putative transcription factor gene is inserted here.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, to discuss whether they can bind to this region and、uh, affect the Expression of this、うん、あのガス、リポーター、ジン
Uh, but uh, in this case, protein kinase was used, and the uh, protein kinase affected the ABA to abscisic acid dependent pathway, and that's why um, this kind of result was obtained. Uh, mm, this is not very typical, but uh, this is interesting, I think. Uh, mm. Because of those protein kinases, the downstream transmission factors should have been affected, and that's why so this promoter was activated ah, in the presence of these and those. Okay. Interesting. By the presence of these. Does this answer your question? Probably once, <laughs> if <laughs> I have a time. Uh, Yes, yes, please. But oh, just yeah. to um, clarify the first um, at the second question, just to confirm also my understanding here. So the effector genes affecting the promoter region oh. and then the, the, the effect of the effector genes in the particular promoter, in this case, is the RD29B or the ABRE case cassette, is reported by the signal of gas. Oh. So, so your question was whether the effector gene is specific for gas, but the, the, <laughs> the explanation from Sugama Sensei is that the effector um, genes affect the promoters that controlling oh. the reporter genes expression in this case is gas. Oh, okay, am thank I? You. Ah, <laughs> ah, yeah, this thank you. It is kind of interesting viewpoint. I know, nobody should think in that way. So, you know, I know, effector may have some direct effects on gas activity, but uh, ah, okay. it's never discussed. Uh, we just usually discuss the effects on promoters. So uh, no, it may be possible at all that uh, at cousin kinases can phosphorylate the gas gene, uh, sorry, at gas protein, protein, gas protein mm -hmm. and uh, affect its activity. Uh, uh, some direct assessment is necessary and to verify that, but uh, it is possible. Uh, now, now I think oh. it's possible. It's kind of interesting. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so thank you, you thank you so much. Uh, your third question, if you have. Uh, okay, uh, probably a simple question, probably. Uh, about the length and the time of, uh, or the duration of uh, the uh, the reported genes that you, you said before, uh, I don't get the, the, really, uh, the, the most important thing about that, like using the, uh, something like, uh, uh, fluorescence timer or something like that. So, uh, are we used uh, that method for uh, general purposes or the specific purposes or something like what the the the, the most benefit to use uh, to to lengthen the the fluorescence or the uh, the reported genes activities uh, duration. Thank you. Uh, to... <laughs> Is your question specific to fluorescent to uh, timer? Yeah, timer. Yeah, yeah. Timer. Uh, timer. Uh, I know. I actually. Yeah. I have uh, no. I know no good example. Um, uh, I'm sorry for that. But, uh, the lifetime for the reporter protein is important. I would say. Uh, Luciferase is has a shorter lifetime. Mm. GFP is general, has a generally long because of its stability. It's hydrophilic and uh, it is stable protein. So it is uh, it usually uh, has a longer lifetime. And uh, in, in some report, uh, and that's why the GFP is not usually used this kind of uh, reporter say. Uh, mm. I didn't right. introduce the uh, reporter say so with the GFP here, right? All right, yeah. Because of that st stability, GFP is not good for that kind of uh, mm -hmm. reporter, say. But uh, mm -hmm. if, the, if you use a shorter lifetime GFP, like uh, to present present timer GFP, then uh, this kind of uh, thing can also be done. And uh, more importantly, probably it, it, can, it can allow to more uh, like reporter in vivo. And this is uh, so the reporter says uh, it requiring the breaking the cell. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, the it most important benefit of GFP is that uh, so it can be observed in vivo, in situ in vivo, uh, without uh, killing the cells. Oh. We, we just have to you know, give the blue light and uh, get the green light. That's the GFP. Uh, and uh, mm, so if we use so the fluorescent timer, so it may be 
more precise to precise this we may be able to get more precise response to some um, know, for some promoters upstream of those uh, processing time so that, that's my guess <laughs> that, okay, thank guess. You. i have to uh, survey some examples thank you thank you uh, very much sensei thank you very much Mr. Thank you for question. Thank you, Masriski. So I think we can have one more question here um, from the participant. I see Ms. Safira, you are raising your hand. So please go with your question. Okay, thank you for the chance, uh, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Ardi. Uh, so um thank so from from the from the lecture, uh it fills me so much with uh, so much information, so much new information. Uh, for that, I'm uh, thanking you so much, uh, Sulaiman Sensei. Uh, so, and then uh, from all the from all the recombinant proteins that we know, uh, especially the reporter gene, reporter genes and uh, the tag protein. Uh, so, and from from all the uh, examples you've uh, given to us uh, in in this uh, lecture, it's all. Uh, Regarding, it's all regarding to the it's all regarding to the um, uh, it's all related to experiments uh, like detecting one detecting the one one proteins or one ge uh, or genes in uh, in everything uh, related to exper related to uh, researches so um, like about this uh, report the reporting genes and the type of protein how can we uh, adjust the I mean active the activity span of this of these uh, proteins so can we do that can we do that there you go um maybe i can uh, tell this uh, by with indonesian i'm sorry miss Ar Ar yes Ar please Ar yes please okay. i'll, I'll uh, try jadi, to grab your question in english later on please okay jadi uh, bagaimana kita bisa mengatur span waktu aktif waktu kapan kapan si protein uh, protein yang protein reporter atau tag protein ini aktif gitu nah, aktif seperti itu jadi mm -hmm. bisakah kita atur bisakah di dimaksudkan oh ini aktifnya hanya pada saat purpose tertentu atau oh ini bisa digunakan pada saat waktu yang lebih lama atau bahkan bisa ber bekerja dalam waktu yang se selama dia ada di selama dia disisip disisipkan dalam organisme tersebut seperti itu jadi kita bisa okay. So I'll try to um, translate the question from Ms. Safira here. She is asking how can we control the expression of the reporter genes? For example, like this example, mm. um, you can control the expression only in particular tissue. And um, we also mentioned that the stability of some reporter, uh, some reporter can be detected only in the short time some are longer and Ms. Safira asked whether it's uh, possible to have the reporter genes the, uh, all the time as long as the genes is inside the plants so I, I think that was her question so uh, no and uh, I know, I know, so I'm a user of the reporter and uh, some other researchers are trying to generate different versions of the reporter genes. So, uh, mm. we users are just dependent on those researchers to be uh, uh, optimizing the, uh, optimizing the, what, well, uh, diversifying the uh, stability or properties or whatever about the reporter genes. And we are just choosing um, some of them, so according to the to our purpose. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm. uh, does that answer your question? Uh, no, in this kind of example, we will uh, to use promoter. In, in that case, uh, to gas, gas pro, uh, to, we will use same gas uh, to, as left and right uh, in this example. Uh, we, uh, we just use different promoters. And in this case, we can compare the promoter activities between left and right. But um, we usually don't care about the gas activity in this case. Uh, we just uh, use them without thinking so much about the, uh, uh, you know, the, um, we usually rely on other researchers. Uh, 
but uh, it may be possible to predict some, you know, at all point mutation that can unstabilize or stabilize those proteins, gas, and uh, on purpose use the gas variants. But usually it is out of our purpose. You know? so we are interested usually on the promoter activity and not in the gas activity, not tweaking the gas activity. Uh, I'm kind of interested in those things, but uh, no, it's not the uh, uh, main uh, study for, the, for us. So, uh, does this answer your question? Uh, Sorry, a helicopter just passed my location, oh. so it's a little bit busy. Um, I try to transfer your answer in more general um, explanation in Bahasa Indonesia. Jadi Mbak Safira, terkait pertanyaannya, mungkin mudah-mudahan saya bisa meneruskan jawaban dari Sugama Sensei. Mbak Safira, sebenarnya pertanyaannya ada dua. Apakah kita bisa mengatur, begitu kan, kapan si reporter Gin ini Uh, aktif begitu ya. Nah, kalau pertanyaan pertama itu diaturnya dengan promoter. Jadi kita punya namanya constitutive promoter, maka kalau pakai constitutive promoter seperti certified CAMV, uh, reporter ini akan muncul terus menerus di bagian manapun dari uh, sampel kita. Tapi kalau promoternya misalnya stress inducible seperti RD29B, maka si gas tadi akan muncul hanya pada saat keadaan stres. Begitu. Nah, jadi itu diaturnya oleh promoter. Tapi kalau pertanyaan kedua, apakah kemudian si uh, protein reporter ini bisa terdeteksi selama gennya ada di dalam tanaman? Nah, itu kaitannya dengan stabilitas dari reporter. Nah, jadi kalau stabilitasnya itu maka yang tadi disebutkan ada lifetime. Ya, berapa lama dia bisa diobservasi? Sebetulnya selama dia diekspresi nanti tergantung berapa lama dia bisa diobservasi. Mudah-mudahan itu menjawab pertanyaan dari Mbak Safira. Uh, thank you very much. I'm uh, sorry for uh, uh, resorting to Indonesian. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to explain in Bahasa because it's easier to explain in Bahasa. So, um, do we still have more questions? Uh, we are already mm. half past 11 here. So, I think it's lunchtime in Japan. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay. Are you okay? Uh, I'm sorry for uh, so long. So, we, so if we still have some question from the participants, do we have any? Okay. I I think we don't have more questions. It can be um us later on uh, for my students in my <laughs> classroom if you have any further questions. So. Um, because uh, we are uh, already 10 past 11 here, we would like to thank you, Skama Sensei, for his um, inspiring lecture. It's very informative, even for me. I didn't use tech before. I knew that Sugama Sensei did many experiment with GST and I never understand what is that. <laughs> so today I know a bit about that. Thank you very much. And um, oh. I would like to... Um, extend um, uh, the gratitude from our study program, the head of study program, Professor Dewi Sigma. She joined this lecture in the beginning, but she have to left this Zoom because she has another agenda. And also from our mm, department head. So mm -hmm. kindly allow me to pass the electronic uh, certificate <laughs> to show our gratitude for your time and next, um, and um, okay. knowledge that you have shared to us for your um, the use of reporter genes and recombinant proteins uh, okay. in the molecular biology. And this is handed from Professor Edi Santosa, our head of department. He is also oh. the graduate from Tokyo University yeah. under the supervision of Subyama Sensei. Hi. <laughs> so thank you very much. So and um, maybe before we close this session, I would like to uh, have a group picture if, uh, with everyone. Can you please uh, turn on your camera? Okay. Um, we have two slides in my screen. So I'll count to three for the first screen. If you are ready, whenever you are ready. Okay. 
if you can turn on your if you can't turn on your camera please put any reaction okay first screen to go one two three smile Hi. a moment i need to pause here <laughs> hmm. okay and second screen online okay one two three smile oh i have only a few faces in the second screen <laughs> Okay, and I would like the participants to fill the attendance list uh, because I would ask the department whether it's possible to uh, provide you with a certificate of attendance uh, of your participation today. So, Sugama Sensei, thank you once again. And no, okay. Please show my regard to everyone in the lab and also thank you for your wife because taking your time <laughs> this morning. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, Thank you me. very much. So, can you allow me to close the, the Zoom? Bye bye. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so much.